Hey, so here's the deal. We cuss a little bit in this show. So, you know, if that's if that's too much for you, just be aware. Yeah, and sometimes we cuss only a tiny bit or not at all. And sometimes we go way off the deep end. The point is that we're just two guys talking about reef crap. So uh, we don't want to try to limit ourselves. Be warned or enjoy. My name is Rich. And my name is Ben. And this is Reef Beef, episode 99, the Reef Beef podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about what's going on with our tanks because I was gone for three weeks and Ben was doing work. And we're going to talk about a beef that Ben has that looks pretty exciting. And we're going to talk about how you deal with a hot summer, even though the hot summer is probably over, and uh, water changes and whatever else we talk to about each other. Just rearrange those words in your mind. This show is sponsored by saltwateraquarium.com, Champion Lighting and Supply, and powered by Polyp Lab. This is the Reef Beef Podcast. Yeah. I decided that we should be called RBP, not RB. RBP. RBP. I was thinking about this because we're starting to use some Reef Beef monies uh, to give back to the hobby, which was kind of the point all the time. And so Sanjay and I have started a, a study, but I can't tell you about that. But hopefully in a couple months, we'll have the results of that. But I was like, oh, maybe we should start the Reef Beef Institute. Um because I always wanted an institute or be part of an institute, but also, um, you know, if 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 uh, we have some funds, so if people have something that they think that the hobby would benefit from, and they need some money to get it done, they could go to the Reef Beef Institute. But I thought then we would be called RBI, and that's a sports thing. Um, Runs batted in. Right, that's it. And that I didn't like um, RB because. Um, Reef Builders okay. is RB. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're RBP. We're already, we've already got it. And I like the P at the end. So I'm, I've been calling us RBP. You uh, know, and if you just want to say it, you could just say Rubapuff. Rubapuff. So, uh, and yeah. that rolls it's off the tongue. A, it's a soft launch, but if you've got something uh, exciting that you would like a little bit of cash for to, uh, to make the hobby better, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we'll see uh, if we make it an official thing or if it's just a word of mouth thing in the future. I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm very... glad that you said to make the hobby better because someone would have like contacted us and say, you know, we could help them pay their mortgage. Yeah, we we try not to do that. Pay anybody's mortgage. Because not even our man. own. Fuck the man. Yeah. <laughs> No, but we have some cool ideas cooking up that we're going to use some of the money that we get from sponsorship and memberships, and we're going to be doing some tests here there that we think are cool. I got a question for you. Go for it. And maybe the beefers. Didn't I just say those exact thing? And then you. I just know, but sometimes you speak Martian, and so I have to reword it. Ah. The okay, yeah. good to know. For the common folk. No, no. If I uh. Yes, yeah, so I've become aware that I speak Martian, so I'm glad you are here to translate. I mean, I am a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Martian, um, right? It's been no secret that I've had a hard year uh, with my brains, working through some crazy ass stuff. And I did that trip to Corning um, to try to like a retreat, and that was really stressful, but good at the after it. I was really stressed. Um, and now I went on vacation with my wife. It was our vacation. It was supposed to be a month long, but her job exploded and we had to cut it back. And but <laughs> it was her her birthday trip and our first big trip since uh, the end of COVID. And um, we were gone for about three weeks. Um, six or seven days of that was travel from the United States to Madagascar. Um, but that trip was excellent for my brains. Like... I kind of, I feel like I'm on a real, like I'm me again. That's why I cut my hair and like or fixed my beard. Cause I was like, well, who the fuck are you? You look like a sloppy piece of little, like, like, uh, uh, you remember, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Oh, do I? Yeah. Remember Nicholas Brendan, the guy who played Xander? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. He looked okay in the show, right? He looked like a decent guy, right? And then you look at him like 
30 years later and he, he was just a total mess. Uh, I think he's cleaned up again. I was like, I look like that. I need, I don't want to look like that. So I'm feeling, when you feel the fame from Buffy and then, you know, it's over and you're like, you and, just feel like that's going to be me when reef beef is over. I'm like, <laughs> what, what's the point anymore? Um, so what was this? So I'm feeling pretty good about myself and everything. And uh, I feel really like a whole nother layer of blankets have been taken off my brain. And uh, it's been about a week since we've gotten back from the trip. I'm still jet lagged, although I just took a huge nap and I feel human again. But, um, I, you know, I think I let a lot of stuff fall through the cracks and a lot of stuff slide around and didn't pay attention to a lot of stuff necessarily. And I'm feeling good now and I'm feeling excited about stuff. So if if I was supposed to do something for you or for the reefing world and I didn't, I apologize. I was not there. I'm feeling like I'm kind of back now and uh, I've got some energy and excitement around the whole thing. And it feels like it's going to stick. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. You're so, fresh brained. So, yeah, I feel like it's my brain again. Like, uh, you know, um, and I think a lot of that had to be do with being away from social media. So uh, yeah. uh, I'm allowing myself like 10 minutes. And if I find myself sitting there, I put it down and I go do something, make make my wife's life better, make my aquariums better, um, which is Man, I take three hours to do that, to, to, to take a dump. <laughs> taking a dump and looking at social media is pretty much the same thing yeah i'm stopping that too i i put um i put kindle on my phone and now on the dump i read snow crash or diamond age or <gasps> snow you had me read snow crash oh, i dude. enjoyed that novel oh my god or uh, hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy if because uh, that's easier yeah um, you should read the diamond age by neil stevenson I think you told me that one too. So that's, I'm going to hit that net. My mom told me to read the Martian. So I'm going to read that next. And then I'm going to read the diamond age. The Martian's pretty good. And there's another one called project Hail Mary. That's really good. But the diamond age, there's like four parts. And I just cry and cry. Cause it's so beautiful and good. Damn. I don't want to cry. You'll love it. You'll love it. You have a daughter. You'll love it even more. I have two. Well, then you'll love it about half. It's only really good if you have one daughter. It's like it's like diminishing returns. That is so delicious. Hey, Ben. Hey, Richard. When we started this podcast, we wanted some help because we needed to buy some equipment. And who helped us out? Saltwateraquarium.com helped yeah. us out. Yeah, they got us our stuff that we needed to make this podcast happen. And we... Uh, I, you too, right? We've both been shopping at saltwateraquarium.com for a long time. Every goddamn day. Every goddamn day. <laughs> so much affectation from them. Um, <laughs> I think you've kept them in business. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think they owe me uh, yeah. just for that. Um, uh, yeah, so they've got all kinds of stuff. They uh they've got uh, uh Mark Callahan has some help uh Lord Callahan has some help uh, areas over there. They've got all the products you need. They've got three distribution centers. This is actually really this is awesome. If you need something fast, saltwateraquarium.com is a great place to go because there's three distribution centers in the US. So if I order something at 11, it's usually shipped by one o'clock and it's to me very quickly. And sometimes that can be very, very helpful. So I like them. I like them. They got an app. What else, Ben? What's good about them? They have discounts. Like? They have discounts for when you set up a profile, from when you order, from when you frequent order. They have discounts for medical personnel and military personnel and and all sorts of personnel. Yeah. Um, tons of online information, and you can even contact them, consult with them even. Yeah. And uh, they have everything that you're looking for. If they don't have something that you're looking for, just let them know they'll get it. Yeah, or you don't need it. You're just wrong. Yeah. Like just, if, if they're out of filter socks, you don't need filter socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're out of, you know, fish food, you don't need to feed your fish. You don't even need it. I mean, yeah. if you call them asking for muskrat pelts, like that has nothing to do with aquariums. Yeah, that would make me happy if someone did that. <laughs> anyway, like, check them out. Aquarium.com, we, we owe them our firstborn child. Richard yeah. and I's firstborn child together will be donated <laughs> to saltwateraquarium.com. That snowman is our firstborn child. Yes. 
Uh, so go check them out. Uh, what's uh, how do you get to them on the web? Um, it's real difficult. It's saltwateraquarium.com. No, really... no, you press what? the link down below. Oh, oh, okay. Don't listen to me. No, go to our link down below because, <laughs> because then they can, you know, they know that they're coming from us to slee stacks over here. That is so delicious. <laughs> All right. What, the, what's been going on with you, uh, in, in the world of reefs? Baby. I mean, you know, we're always told by snowman to make things evergreen, but uh, so over here, I'm, I'm, I'm coming off of a, I, I mean, I know a lot of, well, fuck, a lot of the world has just experienced a pretty gnarly summer. So why I can't, there's no, no, it does. Climate's been, always, it's, it's always, it's volcanoes. always, climate's always changing it's the Not tilt here. of the world it's certainly it's not about us burning fossil fuels right or no because we just we just shove the dirt off the edge of the earth flat earth and we're so i mean certainly too we're so you know our our impact on the earth is so minuscule right i mean <laughs> i mean there's only nine billion of us what effect could that have i think you're tucking an extra billion in there but that's okay who's counting no uh, i haven't checked in a while I, I mean, it's like your reef tank. If you have an algae boom, if you're if you're dosing carbon, vodka or vinegar or something, and your bacteria goes insane, right? Nothing bad happens from that. People are just like that on the earth. But, okay. Anyway, we had a hot summer. Yeah, we. I mean, and here, you know, which isn't that crazy in Texas, but it was a particularly, particularly hot summer and long, and right? Well, our summers are always long, so I'm mm. not sure, you know, it's long and hot. That's, That's your porn name? Like a Szechuan pepper. <laughs> long and hot, like a like a hot pot, like a Mongolian hot pot. But <laughs> Chinese food reference. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, and obviously I go through these all the time. So. But so how I do my thing, I have an open back truck and I have a 120 gallon, 125 gallon vat that I carry purified water. It's been a long time since I dragged pre-mixed water around. Right it's on. Just, you, you, you can, you know, you could argue with me about how it's, it's not, you know, oh, you want to try to not mix water on site, but I've been doing it for over a decade. And as long as you keep it small, but it, it so carrying around the pre-made salt water just destroys vehicles and just as a business you're not going to make it long like that but what because has been it, because, happening because so, it, it spills on stuff and rusts just, no matter how much you rinse it yeah no matter what you do it it, it gets there and it's I, you know i've had vehicles where you can look through the bed of the truck and see the road you know through the bed of your truck my last have, truck was like that have you considered that you're Superman or Kryptonian if we don't want to be specific? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to derail you. You d it, it's easy to do. Just a, <laughs> a mouse could fart and I'd get derailed. But but no like I mean every summer I go through this that that where you know so I you know decant the water into a 5 gallon bucket and premix the water right there. Well in that in this type of weather you know, my water is pretty hot. So what I would do is, oh. you know, shrink and shrink and shrink the water changes. And sometimes, depending how a tank is looking, maybe not even not even do it. You know, the size of the tank, if it's a big tank, no big deal. But, you know, still it was kind of shrinking water changes. And wait, I, wait, wait, just no. just because your your water was too hot. Big time. Yeah. So your water was like what ninety or something? God, dude, it sometimes it felt like it was a hundred something degree oh, water. Well, I guess if it's sitting out in the truck and it's a hundred and ten degrees outside, it's gonna get to be a hundred and ten degree water. Got it. When when you in 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 the pre show notes when you were talking about this, I I, I was trying to figure out why you weren't changing water, and I totally uh, understand. Wow. But, okay. And you got you got to understand that every single client. It, for people who do what I do, you would love for everything to be the same because you go throughout your day and everything's predictable. Um, but every client is very different in that I always push to have people making, well, I, I do all the work, but you know, we <laughs> if we can make water on site in your garage, in your building, man, that's what I'm pushing for. I'd rather have that water there at your place. 
but you know this one's a residential then this one's 20 floors up in a commercial building and then there's this mansion over here and then there's this person who has no space in their garage and then so anywhere where you can i'm pushing for water to be stored and made there in their garage um but a lot of it ends up me carting the water around you know there, there's different things you could think of like i could at the end of the day could decant the water in my truck put it back in my garage and then pump it back out the next day maybe it would have been a little cooler but that's also a lot of work and not really something that you're doing at the end of a day where it's been 110 degrees with 90 percent humidity you just want to go back inside of a house and just <laughs> you know just lay, get ready for the next day but lay naked in front of a fan or an air conditioning yeah. vent but you know so this is weird while i was thinking of of it because i mean after doing this for 25 years I don't need to, I don't really need to revisit that like, man, water changes are important. I'm a huge proponent of water changes. And I've obviously known for the 25 years that I've been doing this professionally that water changes are important, but, but it is interesting to, to watch as the seasons come and go when I've had to slack down off of water changes. And then now it's cooled down and I'm coming back in and doing these big water changes and just it's just that subtle thing when I turn the corner, when I just get to a client's place. And it's just that first one second impression you get when you walk up to the tank. Like, you know, you're sort of setting the stage like, oh, I'm going to have to do a little extra work today. Or damn, tank looks great, man. I barely had to do too much. You know, those sort of impressions. But just seeing across the board, um, you know, how slacking down off of the water changes was just making stuff look so mad. And so you've started the changes again and stuff just looks perkier. It's perked right back up. Looks yeah. great. Things growing again. And, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just nice. It's a little tricky because I have an open top truck, you know, it'd be nice to have a van. Even so then I don't know, you know, would that have, it's still a hot van. The van's like, just going to trap the heat and cook the water too. Cook the water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting um, that uh, your anecdotal eye goes, Wow, these are looking better now that I've done some water changes on them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm now a big fan of water changes. I was never not a fan of water changes, but I thought that, it, you know, some kind of de facto goal in reef keeping is to not do water changes. But and uh, man, I tell you, at the Steinhardt, you know, on the two hundred twelve thousand gallon tank. You know, when something goes wrong, you want to do a water change. And and I think one of the issues we had was, you know, to do a 50% water change, which is, you know, when something's wrong, I want to do at least a 50% water change. Like you know, a, that's 100,000 a gallons. It's like a stock pond. It's, uh, it's, that's a lot of water. And that gets expensive and difficult and hard to do. And, um, and I really saw that system not move forward as quickly as it could have and i think in large part because of that and then here you know i used to do 50 percent water changes all the time i always felt to me if, if i was going to do it once in a while i was going to hit it with a hammer I, you know 10 percent just it was like what are you doing if there's pollution in the water you're not diluting it as much if you know if you're if you're if you're adding traces from it you're not adding enough so um I would hit it with a hammer. And then when I changed to the auto water changes, after about three or four months, it felt like, oh, everything kind of just looks a little better and a little bit easier. Man, with the aquariums, whether it's saltwater or freshwater, no matter what it is, just in my professional experience, I've always been more, what's the word? Well, just comfortable. Or I've just always been more about small, frequent water changes versus every once in a while hitting it with a hammer yeah you know what it's kind of like and and i'm not i'm not gonna you know crap on anybody for not doing water changes you know i, I was reading something the other day that um, our friend jim graham telegram wrote that he doesn't like to do water changes and he's you know adding stuff and it's working out great so that's fine uh but it feels that said it feels kind of like if i you know, does an astronaut prefer to breathe the air on the space station uh, that's been through all the filters that filter out all the poo that's in the air? If you didn't know, 
That's a big problem with space stations is you get particles who particles. Um, Oh my God. Yeah. Read. uh, I forget the name of the book. Uh, But if you read that book about being on the space station, you will never want to be on the space station. But uh, would, would that, you know, as an astronaut or a submariner, you know, would you rather keep breathing that recycled air, which is fine air, or would you rather open it up and get new air? So, you know, they both work. I'm not, like I say, you know, there's so many ways to reef keep, which uh, makes it easy to shit on people who say this is the magic thing. But uh, I mean, why shit on them when you can just flow poo particles into the space station? Yeah. And, you know, maybe we, uh, I'd like to do the real comparison of costs, costs and time. Well, say I don't want to get ahead of myself and overcommit. Well, no, but that was like when I was, you know, when I got that peristaltic tubing, just I just well, I barely did obviously run some quick math in my head and I thought I was getting a good deal. But then you busted out the calculator and it was like it It wasn't. So that's why I do think it's important to quantify things sometimes because you tell yourself a mind story and someone could pop out a calculator and be like, you know. Yeah. It turns out you saved a dollar twenty-three. Yeah, and then it becomes a juice worth the squeeze thing, rather than. But uh, oh, and somebody else said that you can get that tubing from U.S. Plastics. Yeah, you don't have to do it through Alibaba. But then you get some weird mail with it. <laughs> <laughs> so you get chapter three through four of the Bible. Oh, that's that's good, and yay. He started the siphon with his mouth and coughed. We are all really impressed down here, I can tell you. (laughs) Ooh, you are so big. What what else uh, did the hot summer, anything else that the hot summer made you do? (sighs) Drink electrolytes. Um, Yeah, I think, you know, when uh, when my water gets too hot, now, you know, when I mix on cider, mix real vigorously. And when the water's so hot that, you know, besides pouring hot water into a tank, I always get worried about, you know, what at what point is it going to take it to like make calcium and magnesium and carbonates, bicarbonates, like fall out of solution. But I've, I've never seen it do that. So I think vigorously stirred 100 degree water will still not make it fall i don't know if it's like 110 120 like when does that like scale fall out you know no clue <clears throat> I've never i mean if i visually that. saw that i would just chunk it and be like no water change today i know we were talking about i was talking matt wendell and i were working on the transfer method for treating ick and one of the ways to sterilize the water or to kill the any any bits of ick left over you like that bits of ick because i can't remember the name of the particular phase of its life um, profonts and tomonts uh, bits of ick i think is yeah. what it's in the literature a yeah, bit bit o oh, ick it's yeah. like a bit, like oh, bit honey, of honey <laughs> but it kills your fish the worst candy on the planet oh i like bit of honey my dad does too, and I always thought it looked like something you pulled out from under the refrigerator. Oh, it is, and it totally like tears your teeth. If you have fillings, they just come out. <laughs> uh, it's like a sugar daddy, but worse. It's an old sugar daddy. But you know what you do? You heat it up, and then it's just taffy. wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, and then we'll get back to it. I always so bit of honey's weird. The one that I thought is the weirdest candy in the weird world is Chico Stick. Chico stick, that's what like the pressed sugar thing. They're uh, like fossilized stone. tonsil stones. And then you like dip it and lick on it. It's like oh, it's no, it's in the stick, it's in the straw. Yeah. You bite the end off and like just pour the sugar crack into your mouth. I think it's like chicken stock mixed with sugar. <laughs> okay, this has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> mixed with sticks. Um yeah. we were talking about one of the ways you can sterilize the water uh to get oh, rid yeah. of the bits of ick crank a heat is up. to crank the heat up and i believe it was like 120 fahrenheit. Yeah. And we never had any discussion about you know and Matt's got an incredible chemistry brain um among other incredible brain things. Does that allow you to keep using that water once you cooled it down versus yeah. chunking it? Yeah, it okay. it, it kills the ick. 
So I'm they, trying to remember because I remember Matt told me too, and it was like 120 for what? 20, 20 minutes? 24 hours or an hour. Oh, that or, long? Okay. Um yeah. We never did it because it's kind of impractical. Um and, and you know, again, it's 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 it, you're back to why not just swap out the water? You know, um, and I know in California, the reason we didn't want to swap out the water was because of drought. Okay. Um, even though, you know, residential, which includes the aquarium, is only 15% of our water use. Uh, but now, bitches, we got so much water, do whatever we want. <laughs> Fuck it. You, you, know, you guys are going to get right back there. I just leave my sprinklers on all the time. I leave, I make intentional drips in the showers. Yeah. Yeah. I I pulled that flapper out of the toilet. Yeah. Fuck it. Just constant 24 seven. Just go in, take a shit and walk right out. I just go, just, just go in and look at it. Woo. Look at the water moving. It's feng shui sort of. <laughs> Poo shui. Poo shui. Poo shui. So yeah, I'm not worried about the temperatures. It, your 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 part of the world hasn't gotten to 150 degrees yet, and when well, it does, I will before we move on to your thing, yeah. I'll give you one little strategy oh, thing I do as a, a business. So, you know, most of the tanks that I do are, are quite large, but um, there's some clients that have a tank on the side, or you know, I'll have a client that has a, like a, a really nice like 20 gallon that they, you know, in the the beginning they're like, would you clean this tank? It's like as long as you meet my minimum cost, I don't care what I'm doing. So I do have a client with a little tiny tank, but what I have to do, oh, say it. So, so put on these tight shorts and get on your knees and clean under the sump. Can you gyrate a little bit more water boy? Get in there real deep. Yeah. But, uh, so I'll mix up water, but then I put that water in their closet and then I grab the bucket of water that I made last time. And then I will use that. I'll double check the salinity just to make sure. And so I'll, I'll, it's like staying one step ahead, but I'll leave water in their house to be used next time because a tank that tiny, you cannot be changing water with 100 degree water. No. Or when it gets cold, I can't, it's just too, I need it to be room temperature. So Wait, I just leave you, water there. Why can't you change 10 gallon tank 50% with 100 degree water? Because it will cook the. Oh, egg. I'm sorry. It'll, it'll kill all the bits of ick. Ick pieces <laughs> like people don't uh, it, it, i make fun but some you know it, that's one of those things you don't know till you know right if if you're doing a water change we see it i think more often with colder water people don't think oh if i'm putting 50 degree water in my tank i'm drop, you know and i'm changing 50 percent of it i'm dropping the water significantly so yeah yeah i don't mean to make people make fun of people they don't know till they know. I want to make fun of them when they know. Then yeah. that's really fun. We're just here to help you experience the aquatic dangers that can be faced. And we almost there. called this podcast Living on the Edge, Reefing on the Edge. Well, no, We're like, no. how much bleach can we add to this system before everything dies? Wait, isn't there? I don't want to name names to get anyone in trouble, but there's someone who I really look up to that adds bleach to their. Yeah, room. like a drop of bleach is an oxidator. Is that okay? Uh, he is seems fringe. Be, it's it's total fringe. It seems to be doing fine. Um, uh, when I talked to them about it, I wanted. Uh, I was like, I, uh, I'd like to see something more than it looks better to me. That's RS, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's code. That's a code, man. That's ballsy. Or actually, that's a super code because it could be BS too. Yeah. Oh, oh lord. Oh. No, he doesn't care. Um, yeah, that stuff has fallen away a little bit. No one, I haven't heard anyone talking about that stuff. You got. I mean, that's totally just a that fringy thing that, like, you know, when someone has a chemistry background, it's like, all right, you you'd know. Like if if. Craig Bingman started doing something, but he would tell us like, "Hey, this isn't for." Well, so know. does RS. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's it's, you know, all this. I don't have any problem with people doing weird shit to their tanks, right? An experienced person. I, I got a problem with a new person 
Oh yeah. New me, you know, going, I'm going to, I'm going to feed these baby cuddles, brine shrimp. No one's tried that before. They'll probably be fine. It's no, um, but messing around with oxidation, if you've been around or whatever you want, that's fine. Where I flip a little bit and I, and I kind of have a slight stroke is when they convert that, when people convert that to, this is the answer. Oh. It's like, we don't, it worked for you, but we don't know it's the answer yet. Yeah. Somebody, somebody in the discord, I'm sorry, I don't have it up right now, but somebody in the discord had a, a thing where they were, um, they saw their alkalinity consumption drop when their doser stopped adding um, um, uh, Julian's uh, acro power. Hmm. And um, then they fixed the doser, started dosing, and their alkalinity consumption um, sped up again. And now, this is a total mind story, but so I know that amino acids are like energy for corals. So I guess I see the correlation there. Like if a corals yeah. were lacking energy and then they had more and started calcifying more exactly but which is what the first step to mind that's you know a hypothesis which we call a mind actually no it's a mind story when people start saying this is how it works yeah i was about to right? say yeah. so um and they were talking about that we should talk about it on the show and i'm really sorry that i don't remember who said this but i'm jet lagged and I, anyway um and my my thought with that was and they use the word proof. I proved that it worked. It's like, eh, man, you kind of showed that it worked once. So, you know, if, if something like that happens to you, do the experiment, turn off the doser and see what happens again. And then the next step, and, and if it drops again, that's way more compelling than a one-off, right? Yeah. And then if, uh, and then get somebody else, you know, who's got a similar setup to do the same thing and see if they experience the same thing. And then you're well on the road to compelling evidence. Uh, one-offs are one-offs and all our tanks are all so different um, that, that whatever happens to your tank, it's hard to, to generalize that to everybody's tanks. Well, and, and without really knowing, then that gets you into the correlation, I mean, correlation, correlation, uh, causation sort of situation because it's like in if and it, when they watch this don't get mad at me because i'm not singling this out but i'm just you know if i'd put a banana in and then alkalinity increased and like putting bananas in i mean i can see the amino acid thing but i wouldn't run around telling people that without a shadow of a doubt amino acids make calcification you know go faster right it's a great it, it's it's a solid it's a solid thought that if you have some <clears throat> observational evidence of chasing it down might be worth it because that's that's great information do people put bananas in there or are you or are you just i'm being ben oh okay because i once said that bananas cure ick as a joke i think that's why i always say the banana thing because i remember way back oh, when, when you said that it's in the hitler video okay <laughs> it's in the hitler video yeah <laughs> Oh uh, I, should should redo, we that? I should redo that with a, a reef beef it. I don't know. I love it. You it's, don't have to make, you don't have to remake a classic. We'll put the, we'll put the link to it. That is so delicious. Hey, uh, Richard. Yeah, Ben. Do you have any items over there from champion lighting and, and supply? I don't have any items here. They're all under the house. Cause I cleaned up a little bit, man. Champion Lighting and Supply, they bring in that yummy, yummy. You know, I, I am loving that Reef Factory uh, TDS meter. Really? Uh, if you remember, cast your mind back to the past. I set it up and I like it because it um, it uh, is net, is web. Uh, it goes with the, in the sky on the, on the computer in your pocket. And it will tell you what the TDS coming out of your reactor is. Not it your emails reactor. Jesus. It emails Jesus. And then Jesus comes to your house and changes my DI resin. He uh, just tells you, he goes, 60 TDS. Six, 60? Oh, my God. Um, it's I like it a lot because it uh, uh, it's always on. You plug it in. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm sick of battery stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, and I can check on my phone what the TDS is, and it yells at me at the level of the TDS that I've set it to be, and I set it to yell at me when the TDS is three or four, 
and it just started yelling at me. So I'm going to have to change that. Uh, and I like it a lot. I think it's a, it's a great, smart bit of kit. So I'm really happy that Champion Lighting has it. They have some other refactory stuff that I, I may be getting to uh, in the future. So yeah, I like, I like it. And I'm glad Champion Lighting and Supply is there. And freaking Todd is all over helping the 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 hobbyist and the industry so um i just can't tell you how much i love him because i love him too much and let's sing the song that we all remember from our childhood champion lighting and supply they are not friable that's right i love that song champion lighting and supply i think it's championlighting.com check them out that is so delicious uh i wrote an article for world watch one during covid uh, because I'm a Blue Blazer regular, and and I've always wanted a nickname, and I've always been fighting what's my nickname, right? And uh, I used Octopodes as my Blue Blaze, and I don't like that. And I was thinking on one of the flights I was on recently that when I uh, joined Reefs.org, I, I went by Lefty, because that sounds like a good nickname people would have, Lefty. Um I, I don't know why they would have that nickname. And 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 I was thinking, oh, that is my nickname. I'm going lefty is my nickname. We're done. If I have a nickname, that's it. So I'm okay with my nickname now. This has fuck all to do with Reeves. Yes. But wait, where was your where was Thales from? Thales. Thales. Thales is tough um because people don't pronounce it correctly and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, like I just did. Thales. They want to say Thales or Thales. Thales. Uh, Thales was a, a pre-Socratic philosopher. Uh, he was the first person to say the idea that humans came from fish. Oh, weird. So he was like the first... Evolutionist? Evolutionist, essentially, yeah. So yeah, so at first I was lefty, and then at 666 posts, I retired lefty. Good. Because that seemed like the thing. Freeze frame. And I changed to righty because that made sense to me. And then people got all weird and thought I was righty political. And I like had all this crap about being a righty or it was so weird. Then that's why I changed it to Thales because I just got, I got bored of arguing about right or left when it was just lefty to me was always a left-handed pitcher was called lefty you know and i'm not left-handed so that's funny and so right anyway i'm explaining the joke what are we uh what are we talking about about now on were you show? gonna expound on your madagascar stuff uh reef well I, we went to madagascar it was amazing it was a very cool place um it was very far away it's about as far away from my house as you can get on earth actually and it was pretty cool. It was great to be back in Africa. I lived in Africa when I was like seven, eight, and ten. When I was what nine, I was nine. I wasn't alive for a year, and <laughs> uh, and so it was a great trip. It was a great trip to be on with my bride, and it was a great trip to be on with just my bride instead of with my bride and our spawn. And I love our spawn, but it's really nice to just be with my bride. So it was great trip we saw all kinds of crazy endemic animals and weird giraffe neck weevils and did you see one of them bayo bayo trees we saw five of the six species of baobab trees in madagascar baobab and the i love them trees. i also have some some i have some baobab fruit powder um, i didn't know they make fruit they make fruit i was obsessed with their fruit and i took all these pictures of their fruit there's just no reason to take a picture of their fruit. They're just, that sounds pornographic. They're not interesting. Uh, I've started putting pictures up on Facebook. I am, I am working on my website. I'm going back to packedhead.net and I'll have pictures of the, of all those pictures will be up there in the next few weeks. And uh, maybe I'll remember to bring it up again if people are interested. What's um, the, not that, you know, I never thought of this, but like, what's the, water reef situation around madagascar is there much of anything around yeah there? there's like it's like in the south there's like the third largest barrier reef in the world oh. um we didn't do any diving because that's not what the trip was for um there was too much to see uh i'd like to go back and go diving there 
we did some snorkeling in one place uh which with, with that had a local reef that had clearly been hit by a cyclone there was a lot of damage uh, but there was some stuff alive that looked pretty good it wasn't you know huge or anything um and it, and there's just something about the indian ocean that speaks to me the the way the rocks look and the way the water moves and uh i just love it um, you'd say it's rad i would say i no i wouldn't say it's rad i would say it's fucking awesome Hello. So I loved it. Uh, I can't wait to go back. That's a, it's a hell of a trip, though. It took us three days to get there. So um, I don't know when we'll be back. But they uh, don't. We don't. Our industry doesn't get fish from that area, right? We, I think we do. Pretty sure we do. I can think of freshwater stuff, but I can't oh, think of any saltwater things. I've got to make a correction. I we have to because Madagascar. You know, we get so many reptiles from there. Yeah. So, but I'd have to double check that. I need to make a correction. Andy Ryan corrected me when we were talking about live aquaria. I said that uh, they were drop shipping from Quality Marine, and they're not anymore. That stopped when 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 Live Aquaria changed hands. Oh, okay. Um, that all changed. Um, yeah. So I don't want to misspeak about what's going on in Madagascar. It was kind of interesting to be on a vacation and not have underwater stuff be any of my focus hey richard yes ben what happened with your aquarium while you were gone uh not much the alkalinity crashed though oh um and patrick carter who was taking care of my tank very lucky to have him taking care of the tank again is he uh, related to lisa carter he is lisa carter okay but don't tell anyone he doesn't want anyone to know i won't even tell him okay Good, because he doesn't know either. Good. Uh, he was more concerned about the alkalinity than I was. Um, when I saw him in person, he seems less like he, he played it cool. But I, I know he contacted Terrence Fugazi because Terrence has access to my Apex. So he was checking stuff out. And Terrence was like, yeah, he was a little freaking out about your alkalinity, which I get. You know, it's you're taking care of somebody's system. You know, you want it to be right. And uh but 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 I got back, you know, the alkalinity dropped. I was keeping it between eight and nine, and it dropped to about seven, and it was there for about three weeks. Um, and everything looks fine. Everything's growing gangbusters. It's I mean, and you'll have a bunch of different opinion and experiences about this, but I mean, excuse me, uh, seven is, uh, you know, I think the average like ocean alkalinity, yeah. reef alkalinity. But, you know, and obviously in my experience, it's like when you move, alkalinity quickly can piss things off. Um, yeah. But but as long as it sort of slid down to seven and stopped at seven. Would yeah, be... but it, it was over a couple of days. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a slow, a quick, it, it was a medium slide. But then on in you, in your head, you're like, okay, so why is this happening? Well, exactly right. So try to figure that out. And there was a couple of things that we've sleuthed out that I think I get. So, you know, also, you know, I well, I like to talk about, you know, how Apex is great. Uh, I was able to look at the Apex and make changes to it on some portions of the trip. So sometimes in the middle of nowhere in Madagascar, I had... Um, data coverage because um they're adopting cell phones they don't have landlines right uh so in some places weird places you get coverage a lot of places we went there was no coverage we were in the middle of freaking nowhere um so i was so that's awesome i was able to actually see what was going on so i think a couple of things happened one was it looked like the feed pump got turned off somehow and i may have done that by accident um so i turned that on patrick may have done that by accident i i knew that the feed pump was off actually because i was able to, patrick sends me a video of the tank and of of under the house you know when he's here and he texts it to me and uh i was able to get that video to download and i could see that the feed pump wasn't moving and then i was able to log into my camera and see that the feed pump wasn't moving I was able to restart it. Okay, so that allow may have allowed the alkalinity to drop. Not to throw anyone under the bus, but what is your feed pump? What brand? It, oh, it's the 
Ka- uh, Camar. Oh, Khmer, whatever. Khmer Rouge. X- the Khmer P- Rouge. Oh. The Khmer Rouge. Yeah. Um, whole pot. Yeah, I think it's great now that I that you know I knew I had I got a bunk one before and I was confused. I think that it's a pretty great pump now. So uh, it was I, just sort of restarted. It got choked up on something. It was just off. So huh. I don't know if Patrick was looking at it and pressed it and turned it off by accident, or if I pressed the stop button on the app by accident. I don't know what happened, but it was off. So I restarted it. I was able to watch it start spinning again. Great. Um, and then Patrick also bumped the um, the dial on the CO2 feed. So it was dosing less CO2 for a day or two. God damn it, Patrick. Yeah. So, but that's good. So, okay, here's a couple more things to take care of when you're going on vacation. Tape that dial down or at least mark it, you know, so it, if it gets bumped, you know where it goes. Um, that's something I wouldn't have done before because who would bump that, right? Yeah. Patrick um, would. And so I logged in and I upped the calc, right? The, the calc dosing. And I actually saw... I have it here. I can show you. It's funny. Your alkalinity can go down fast, but for some reason it feels like getting it back up is a slow slog. Suppose it depends how you do it. Right. No. Yeah. It was a completely slow slog. Can you see this? I can. Okay. So this is the pH of my calc reservoir. And that's a week. And you can see it started at 12 on August 25th, which is normally where it is. And I put the pH probe in there because I wanted to see if you could see when the caulk washer was losing its punch, right? Yeah. Which I've never seen before. It's always been 12. But here you can see it. It drops, man. It drops yeah. to 11. And here where it goes all the way back up, that is totally when Patrick added more caulk washer. Let me ask you for technical reasons. See those little outliers there? These? Yeah. Do you consider those just a little glitch or do you think it actually read that? Well, that I think that's a little glitch. It's And it's also, you know, 11.8 to 11.9. Okay. Pretty insignificant. Yeah. Each one of these big steps, uh, the top one is 12.2. The second one is 12. So, you know, yeah, these, that's true too. These steps yeah. aren't dry. It dropped from 12 2 to 11. Yeah. And then Patrick added the um, the caulk and up it goes. So you think, oh, wow. Yeah. It actually ran out of caulk. Mm, not so fast, Batman. Huh. Here is after I got home. This is September 11th. We're all good. And then it starts doing the same thing till yeah. today. And then it goes back up. But what happened today was not that I went and added more caulk. I went down and I looked and the pump that circulates in the caulk that comes on once every three or four hours and spins it up was was not spinning. Oh. It was jammed. And so that gets like three or four liters of fresh water run through it every day. And as that water drips into there, it does not mix the caulk. So okay. when I looked in the caulk bin, I guess I can stop sharing the screen right now. When I looked in the caulk bin, the water was crystal clear. And because I went down to add caulk because I thought, oh, well, clearly it's working. And then I saw, oh, that pump's off. I turned on that pump. It shot back up immediately. So I think what happened when Patrick added caulk was that he poured it in and that was enough to go into solution to raise the solution back up to 12. Okay. And then oh, it took two weeks for it to come down to zero. So I'm not so sure that using a pH probe to monitor the saturation of your caulk works, but it can def, you know, as when you need to top it off again, because I think a tiny bit will spike your pH back up, but it will definitely tell you if you're, if, if it's not mixing, at least the way right. I have it set up. So I'm pretty, you know, as an, as an aside, that is my porno name, caulk bin. Caulk bin? Yeah. <laughs> not, not caulk mix. Caulk bin. No, caulk mix. I, I don't mix cock the bin. cocks. It's just some caulk bin. Uh, the other thing about um, 
that I'm thinking about uh, based on calcium reactor stuff and adding, um, you know, thinking about having the caulk do the heavy lifting. We talked about that before. Um, I think I'm pretty sure that my reactor, my calcium reactor is undersized because really? it, we, assuming the caulk was doing really essentially nothing to the, to the alkalinity while, while this, you know, in the recovery, um, the, the, the amount of media I have in my reactor is not enough to really make it go. Hmm. Right. That's, that's, I think one of the reasons why I, you know, right now the feed pump is running at 120 mil a minute. Yeah. And that's not, that's not super awesome. For that's the a lot of feed. Yeah. Pump. And for the month or two before it was running at 70 and the alkalinity was between eight, five and nine. Um, so, and I also know that when a, a calcium reactor, this happened at the Academy with big reactors too, when they got about half fill, and this didn't make sense to me, I had to really wrap my mind about it. Yeah, but that's surface area, right? Right. So when they For get half fill, time. they stop being uh, as productive with the alkalinity. Which is funny because I feel like some people in that situation, well, oh, I got it halfway down, you know, maybe a little longer, but it's like, you don't realize that that it is halfway down, it's it, almost non-effective anymore. Right. And for me, it was like, how it's still got to be dissolving. How can it not, you know, it dissolved that first half, but it didn't dissolve the first half. It dissolved all of it evenly. Right. So it's not like in chunks. So it makes sense to me now. I know when my calcium reactor gets about halfway, it stops being effective. So I'd like a new calcium reactor, a bigger one, or I'm thinking about just extending mine and making it taller. Um, Geo? What? Geo makes good stuff. I, I'd rather not buy a whole new thing because I, there isn't anything out there that makes me go, that is significantly better. Mm. And, and you know, do I need to spend a, a grand on a big calcium reactor? But the problem or is the one you have, the, the company's defunct. Right. If if that company wasn't defunct, I would I would just get a new one from them. So there's there's two things I'm thinking about with the calcium reactor. One is just chopping it and putting another foot of tubing in there. Right. The other thing is I have an older, smaller calcium reactor as well that I could run so double up. I could double up. But traditionally I've hated doubles and and I've not found them effective. But since this is its own calcium reactor, which is also from the same company it's got a recirculation pump. Hmm. So I would just run that recirculation pump as well. And then I think it would actually work just fine. Um, so I suppose I should do that. I, let, it, let me know in the comments or on the Discord what you think I should do. Uh, the only thing I think about doubling up, the only thing that comes like to me right away is just this thought that more connections mean more possible problems. Well, yeah, but... That's true, but I'm just going to, uh, this is how I'm going to respond to that. Meh. Um, more connections are always problems, but we make connections all the time. Yeah, it's true. Right? It's just if one line. If you do the connections as good as possible. Then, that's just one yeah. line to another line. And the only reason I'm considering this is because it's got its own research pump. You know, more, more electricity. I don't know. So uh, let me, uh, people listening and beefers, let me know what you think or if you have any ideas or thoughts on that. Or if you know of a calcium reactor that you think I really should try because you think it's just the bee's knees. That is so delicious. Hey, hey uh, Richard. Yeah. I know you're going to go get some polyp lab things. Because, and I know why you're going to get polyp lab things. Because the 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 feeling that you get from being powered by polyp lab it's a very synergistic and paradigm shifting type of just energizing feel from ions and um feng shui coursing through your body it's also be, frangible it's frangible and <clears throat> and it's friable what we're going to talk about with polyp lab now is the new version of the Polyp Lab Coral View lens. Uh, it's I like this version of it a lot. It comes with a couple things that are pretty hip. Uh, the main thing that I like 
is that it comes with it, first of all it's just one big lens now instead of a bunch of little lenses and They're then not it's playing got, anymore yeah and then it's got cases for your red lens and your orange lens oh wow or your green lens i don't see color so you know what i've got to do is i've got to maybe we'll do this for the next commercial we'll uh i'll take pictures with the various lenses in a couple different lights over my tank and then you guys can all tell me what looks good. Vote uh, which one looks best. Uh, but the thing that I like about it a lot is that it comes with a lens cap now. Oh, cool. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, I like this unit a lot. I'm, I, I've been waiting for a while for the new one to get to me. And I like it a lot. So, um, yeah, that's our, one. that's our Polyp Lab spot. Check it out wherever delicious things are sold. That is so delicious. Yeah. So a lot of people... I mean, if you watch the show a lot, you know that Richard and I aren't necessarily big fans of mechanical filtration. Um, I can speak for myself in saying that because you've trapped a particle, that doesn't mean it's not still sitting in the water degrading. So you haven't really done anything. But that is also, even though I'm not a giant fan of roller mats, that's how I understand that if someone pointed a, a water pistol at my head and said, use mechanical filtration. I would say, fine, a roller mat, because that's the only thing that actually pulls it out of the water. And then the degradation stops right there. Um, now, and I, I want to say a caveat too, because I'm, I'm okay with mechanical filtration myself in the first like year, you know, of a baby reef where you're trying to get it all together. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat of a fan of doing that. Uh, more so but then you know i have a lot of clients i've had for a long time and i pretty much just well let me show you so like you know if you're going old school like i still will use there there was the old filter sock like this sucker here felt i guess they call it felt filter sock yeah well many years ago and actually it was after going to richard's place and talking to him about mechanical filtration that flipped me is then i started using these and i use these a lot and as you can see, it's just mesh. I don't know the micron. I think maybe it's 100 micron it's or much 200 bigger. micron. It's much bit. <laughs> I think it's much bigger. Okay, like three, maybe three, 400 micron. I and think. What are you trying to accomplish with that? Th this gets away, like, all I'm trying to do is because if I had already designed a system where it's just a pipe coming in from the drain, I still want to protect anything that could be going through that pipe a fish a snail a, a whatever i want to stop it from going and possibly getting stuck into my um in, into the pump and maybe like a minor amount of mechanical filtration but then again you got to understand my whole problem with mechanical filtration is so you have caught a particle it is still being flushed with water and still degrading and still affecting your water quality so filtration wise it's not doing that much for you but my my beef is this so you know i mostly moved to this to the I mesh still, one yeah the, and I, uh, let me let me translate from martian uh, or into martian the the mesh one is there to just catch anything big that comes through so it doesn't go into the sump and get lost or get sucked into the pump actually to be honest with you too it it cuts down on micro bubbles from stops, the drain a bit and it slows bubbles down yeah, I also I'll also use it. I don't do it with carbon because carbon is very frangible, but I'll sometimes put things like Chemipure or polyfilter or some types of filtrations where it's a good thing, you know, to let the, the water all flow through it. Friable. Friable. What did I say? Frangible? Yeah. Friable. Um, I do have a couple systems, a handful of systems. I still have these out there just because they've just proven to be a little bit messier tanks for whatever. I have had this beef for a really long time, but I, I sort of keep this. I uh, keep I've kept this to myself. Go ahead. I'm just going to tell you I'm a dick because yeah. frangible, frangible is a fine word to use for that, too. Is it? Yeah. I've had this beef for a very long time because I've been using these since the 90s. You know, and as I said, I've pretty much walked away from them. But I have never understood because people throw these in their washing machine and then they, you know, sometimes they get into a. A argument with their wife or husband about why well, you putting these dirty nasty things in a washing machine and you know and they'll put bleach in there and i've always thought that that was not a great idea and as a maintenance guy i take these off right away 
and I carry this short length of hose with me, this five foot hose with a, you know, a pressure nozzle on it. And I'll go on the side of a client's house and I will just blast these. I even do that with these as well. Yeah. Just to sort of blast them clean on site. You know, you, you leave it right side in, you know, one side, flip it, other side, flip it. Okay. Then turn it inside out, blah, blah, blah. And because you would see people bitching and moaning all the time about cleaning these. And I've never understood why people, you know, pile them up and then throw them into the washing machine. I always thought about like residue from soap, you know, residue yeah. from bleach. <clears throat> I, I get it because I get I get a couple points because one guy told me that lived way up north. He said, you know, when it's you know, there's a five feet of snow on the ground, you can't take it outside and blast it. And I was like, OK. Yeah, but I also think if you're in a, living in a place where you got five feet of snow on the ground, you probably have a garage with a utility sink. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm with you. I, I, it always seemed like it was so much easier to spray it out real quick and put it back than like to swap it out, you know, to have 30 socks that you just let get dry and crusty until you get to the washing machine and then toss them in. I'm going to tell you this, and it applies to that little filter that we often um, recommend as well, ah, that Marineland filter. I've got that running on my pond right now. When you get it dirty, when you get this dirty, when you get that filter dirty, you do not set it to the side. Yeah. You clean it right away. I've had clients before. Now, normally my clients don't mess with things, but I've had clients before that get a little involved and ask me because they want to fiddle with the tank. So I would have them swap these out in between when I was there. Well, they'd throw them in the garage. And man, if this thing gets dried out, and I've experienced this with that Marineland filter as well, if it's still wet and fresh, you can blast crap right off of it. When that stuff dries, I don't know chemically what's going on, but it becomes a nightmare to get clean. It just turns into, it just binds up and turns into like cementish stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I turned mine off this morning and didn't feel like cleaning it. So I left it in place. Because but that, that, but in that, Richard, that, that's another thing though. If you keep it wet, it's okay. It's when you dry right. it out. Right. Well, I'm saying that's exactly why I left it wet. It's like, I'll get to it. But if I let it dry out, then I'm buying a new filter. Yeah. You know, um, those pleated cartridges, even the, the, the socks you're talking about, the water pressure can degrade them a little bit. So over time, yeah you're going to get a little bit less filtration, but it's they, not. I don't find that much of a big deal. They do that kind of thing. That's a good beef, man. I like that. But, <laughs> you know, and that's a funny thing, whether you and I, you know, that you and I don't really like these anymore, but I got news for you. They're ubiquitous. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was, I did a consult uh, with Shed Aquarium this week. Um, they're going to do some spawning stuff. And we came up with mechanical filtration and we talked about it for a little while because I was like, no. And we went through it all. I was like, it, shit's just rotting. I didn't say shit because it was a consult. Um, mm. I said, stuff's just rotting in the sock. I'd rather have it rotting near something that's going to eat it. Eat it or the skimmer can pull it out or, yeah. you know. So that was good. It's Yeah. It's, I, I like again, so you, so you trapped a particle. What now? It's still screwing up your water quality. I do. I want to give a shout out to the Delaware Reef Club. Todd Crunkle, our friend uh, from uh, Champion, um, uh, works with local clubs, which is amazing and wonderful. And they uh, had a meeting. They were looking for a speaker to give them a quick talk. And because Todd is so amazing, I was like, hey, I can do a quick talk. Um, and I ended up doing a long talk. Um, but it was super uh, it was super fun. And the it, the talk was it was about the, what's going on with spawning because I'm prepping for this year's spawn which i'm really excited about but um it was like going to be a 15 20 minute talk and it was a 45 minute talk oh wow. um, god I, I, they they seemed okay with it but i felt bad um this is for spawning this year ben i'm building this whole other rack so uh i'm not going to get much into it now till it's done being built but uh, if you're interested, I will be chronicling the spawning this year uh, in the member section on the Reef Beef Discord. Um, but you're you're doing it in that vat? I, you know, uh, I, I'm no the the corals are going to be in tanks, right? 
And I've got corals up here behind me from the 2020, 2020 spawn um, that have been baking in a, a GBR um, cycle for the last 14 months. Wait, and these that, are new corals unrelated? No, these, are, these are old corals up there that okay. I'm going to use that, 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 that I raised from larvae in 2020. And the colonies are, you know, Texas food bowl size. Um, so I think they'll spawn. So we'll see. And then I've got, I'm going to get new corals, uh, a different species. I'm sorry. I'm going to look up what I decided on. Uh, again, unique coral is uh, helping me out. And so I'm hoping that those corals get here very soon. Joe. Joe being super awesome. And I decided to go with Ceramentosa this year. Ceramentosa. So um, hopefully all that will work. And uh, so, and I've got too many corals now in these tanks to have space for the incubators. You know, those things, those buckets that bounce that have the baby coral in them. Yeah. Um, and uh, for the settlement trays, it's just too much coral in the way. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that anymore. So I'm just building this rack. It's, uh, it's got two of these uh, plastic containers on it. Um, and I'm figuring out how to plumb that and how to get water to and from it with a dose. And then each one of them needs a heater and each one of them needs a temp probe. Uh, and so I, I need to get a couple of pieces of kit to be able to do it, um, which is coming. And then I have to figure out, do I, do I have the dose feed into this top one overflow into the bottom one and then pull out and then go back into the main system or do I have the dose feed and pull from the same one and have a pump in the bottom one and have it recirculating? I haven't decided yet. There's pros and cons to both, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm excited about this. Also, it's a nice height. I won't be bending over in any kind of weird way. It just gives me more room to move around. That's why the desk is all in a different place. But I was getting worried because it was like the settling tray. If, 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 I, ha if I have to have a heater in each one of these... I can't just put my settlement tiles on the bottom because freaking baby corals like to settle on heaters. Ugh. And I was like, what am I going to do? And I pulled out the settlement tray from last year, or actually that I've been using for four years now. Um, and it fits perfectly inside of this. Oh, okay. So it's, I'm, and so I'm very excited. So I have to pick up another one, which I think it's a standard tray because if I have two, and part of the reason I'm doing all this, if I have two different species of coral go, I have to keep them separate, right? Yeah. They don't fertilize together. I want to keep them separate. So I may need both of the levels of these things to make it happen. Huh. So anyway, um, the pictures of that, and we'll be talking about that in more detail. And as the spawning happens, we'll do, you know, live streams uh, in the members section. Um, oh, man. Like I remember how year. tired you were last time yeah i have to look at the dates i might i might only watch for a week i watched for two weeks last week last year um and i might only i, I we might be much smarter i might be much more confident in the prediction of when the spawn's going to happen to not watch for two weeks yeah you were really friable yeah i was frangible too uh That's and it. hopefully it's not a damn split spawn although I hear talk that people are worried that it's going to be a split spawn. They think there's some people who think there may be a spawn next month, which I'm not prepared for. It's supposed to be in uh, November, but uh, the temperature might cause things to spawn <clears throat> prematurely or early and twice. So we'll see. And also when they come here, it's not going to be as hot as it is there because I, I tell this what to be. So yeah. That's what's going on here. I'm I'm excited about stuff. I'm I'm thrilled. And I clean I'm cleaning everything and unmahanoing everything and unacquiring flatworms in the main system. I have a new way of dealing with them, I think. Oh wow. And uh uh man, I love that 4D aquatics um ceramic razor on the Tunzi cleaner, magnet cleaner for glass tanks. Because I don't know if you can notice this tank here, Ben. Yep. But you can see into it now. Okay. That's the tank that's, you know, had, it had like a half an inch of coralline algae all over. Oh, on the front. Wow. And I just went, and it just ripped it right off. So. 
kudos to our friends at 4D. Kudos. To, if you're a beefer and you go to High Tide Aquatics, tell them you're a beefer and Kenny will give you 10% off. Uh, and if he and if it's not 10%, demand 10%. Um, yeah, he was very happy. Some beefers came and drove a, a bit and went to see him. And uh, he was very excited about that. So check him out. He's doing um, quarantine livestock. So quarantine fish. He's doing it all in house. And, and he's uh, located where? In he's Oakland. located in Oakland. And, uh, you know, you can look him up. He's all over the web. And, uh, uh, you know, anybody who's doing quarantine livestock, uh, he's humble fish approved. And uh, we should support anybody who's doing quarantine livestock because we all say we want that. So that's what we should do if we can. All right. My name's Rich. And my name is Ben. And we'd like to thank the Beefers for their support. We'd like to thank uh, saltwateraquarium.com. Champion Lighting and Supply and Polyp Lab for their power. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, remember no matter where you go, there you are. I got home and the goat was like, blah, and it blah, and the hair was blah. So I cut everything off and I feel. Yeah, it looks like you cut everything off. I did. I feel, where's a good, there you go. There you go. Me I too. I shaved everything. I shaved my beard. I shaved my head. It's you just... look good. And that wife beater shows off your pasty, skinny ass shoulders <laughs> as you drink your purple drink. This is walrus semen. Excellent. That is so delicious. Just hold it at the end. Hold it now. Freeze frame. <laughs> oh. oh, no one said go. Keep going. You know what this bottle is? Walrus. This is from Ciche. Oh, is it? They they sent me a bottle of this. It's kind of a funny story because they sent me the bottle of this uh, like uh, um, Italian lemon liquor. Yeah, and I drank it here and there, and my wife drank more of it because holy crap, it had a lot of sugar in it, you know. Oh and yeah, so and and you don't do sugar because you want to keep your feet. Yeah. So, but finally, I was sort of even though I loved it as a present, I was sort of excited when it was over, and then I took the label off, and now it's holding walrus jizz. So nice. Guzzle that walrus, that WJ, that good old WJ. That purple drank that walrus jizz. <laughs> like I loved Spaceballs, but I'm not asking for a Spaceballs number two. No, but a remake of Spaceballs might be really fun. It depends, man. I, I'm I'm of those people like, oh, now we're going off you know, on a Kevin tangent Hart, again. Kevin Hart could be the Rick Moranis guy. No, it's just, that's too commercial. <laughs> like, like what, wouldn't you get mad if they remade Buckaroo Bonsai? No. Like, what? No. No. Let's talk about this for a second. No. Why? Why? <clears throat> because Buckaroo Bonsai was from a place and a time for people from that place and a time. And it's a great story. And if they remade it and remade it well and updated it, I'd be all for it. The Mummy. Did you see The Mummy with Brendan Fraser? Yeah. Did you like it? Oh, yeah. That's a remake. Oh, well, from a mummy from like the 50s? Yeah, I, I got some... I got some terrible news from you. The, the, the mummy that Brendan Fraser made in 2000 as a remake from a movie from the 50s is about the same length as Buckaroo Banzai till now. Oh, I don't want to hear that, Richard. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, 80, terrible. 90, oh, shit. Terrible news for you, Ben. Uh, I don't care how many hip pairs of glasses you have on. And how long your hair gets, and how much you dye your beard hair to hide the gray. The shit you like is old now. It's true. And they remade the mummy even more recently. Do you know that John Carpenter's terrible. The Thing is a they remake? Remade. Absolutely. And that one was from the 50s. <laughs> yeah. And do you also know that this has fuck all to do with aquariums? No, I think it's got everything to do with aquariums. <laughs> Yes, yes, no, of, I can feel you. <laughs> but uh, ask me what happened with my aquarium while I was gone. Hey, Richard. 
What happened? You're supposed to say yes, Ben. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't realize. Okay, let's do it again. Ready? Go back. Okay, okay ready? Okay, all right, all right. Hey, Grant, come here. <laughs> come here. Okay, he doesn't want to be on camera. He's a handsome boy. But uh, anyway, so actually, that whole quote is, "Hey, hey, hey! Don't be mean. You don't have to be mean. Because remember." No matter where you go, there you are. Who says that? Buckaroo Banzai, motherfucker! Buckaroo Oh, God. 